When talking about circles of fifths, we considered those that could help you to modulate, i.e. to move the music to another key. And I'd like to think a little bit more about this. Modulation is a very important concept in music. It means going from one key to another. Music would be very boring, boring and dull if pieces remained in the same key all the time. So we find that modulations occur a lot in music, um, sometimes a great deal. And this keeps the music interesting and gives us the feeling that we're moving on somewhere. The commonest modulation that you often hear quite near the beginning of a piece is to the dominant. So for example, a piece in F major might move to C major quite soon in the, its course. So for example, again, the well-known Christmas carol, while shepherds watch their flocks by night, goes like this. of C major. If you really wanted, you could even modulate that to A minor. It would sound like this. That would sound slightly more forced, perhaps not quite so natural. Um, but anyway, th that illustrates the concept of modulation, going to a different key. These are quite definite modulations where the new key is established quite firmly. But we also find many instances of uh, keys simply being hinted at. Rather than a true modulation taking place, we find that a key is suggested. And again, this gives the music interest and means that we feel we're moving somewhere. Um, one of the commonest of these uh, involves a chord which we usually call this secondary dominant, which means a dominant seventh of the dominant generally. And you find this towards the end of a piece. As I say, it gives greater colour, greater variety to the chord progression and can again make the cadence sound more final and more satisfying. If, for example, we return to the progression already mentioned, 2B751, that sounded like this. That's 2B751 in G major. If we make one alteration in the bass, rather than C natural, if we change that to a C sharp, it sounds like this. What we've created there is actually the dominant seventh in the key of D major. But in this case, it doesn't go to D major, it just suggests D major and goes immediately to G. But you get that extra color. And so it's hinting at a new key, but not actually modulating to it. Uh, Many composers have used this. Uh, Bach is an example. For example, um, the chorale Wie schön leuchtet der Morgenstern ends like this. He could have ended and that would sound perfectly good, but this added secondary dominant um, makes it just sound a bit more interesting. Where we've hinted at another key without actually modulating. Another example of the secondary dominant um, can be found in the tune Blackbird which ends G major and the third last chord is the secondary dominant which suggests again D major but actually immediately comes back to G so here it is again a move to the subdominant key often occurs later in the piece because it helps emphasize the feeling of coming home 
sometimes composers actually modulate to the subdominant, other times they simply hint at it. If we're in the key of C, the subdominant chord is F. Now, the subdominant scale involves the note B flat. And if we want to give the feeling of having moved to the subdominant, um, that B flat is an important note to introduce. So, for example, if you were towards the end of a piece in C, you might hear this. And by introducing that B flat, which is one of the notes of the scale of F, the subdominant, and doesn't enter into the scale of C, that B flat helps you to think you're um, to, that B flat gives you the flavour of the subdominant. So here's the progression again. And you find this quite frequently towards the end of pieces, um, either a, a hint of the subdominant or something slightly stronger. Uh, a famous example of it can be heard towards the end of the prelude by Bach the prelude in C from book one of the 48 preludes and fugues. And he introduces a B-flat just towards the end to give the feeling of hinting at F major, not actually going to F major, but hinting at it, and thus giving a subdominant leaning, as we sometimes call it. So the chords at the end of this piece sound like this. again and we'll finish by hearing the complete prelude in C played on the harpsichord as it would have been in Bach's own day.